This is Twit. Let us talk about the Pixel Slate. They announced this, I think, when they announced the Pixel 3, and they finally came out with it just a few weeks ago. Yeah. Uh, you had to rush to get this one. I was well. I was a little behind the the ball on this. I, if I remember correctly, I was out of town when the announcement ah. happened, and then when I arrived back and heard that these were actually you could actually you know place these uh, in your cart. When I went there, the the uh, i5 version, which is the one that I think we were, we were going to get, the high end version, yeah, or the lower version of the high end, the right. the, the intro of i5 at like a thousand dollars, was a sweet already spot. out of out of stock, and that's why it's sold out. But it's a yeah. lot, a thousand dollars, thousand dollars. So this is a step down. This is the. M3. Old a, the old Atom processor rebranded M3. Yes, so this is the M3. Uh, let's see here. I believe this one has 8 gigs of RAM. That's good. 64 gigs of storage. That's plenty. Uh, I feel like that's plenty for me. Um, and Have you felt it slow? No. I, I would say the only time that I feel things kind of slow down a little bit is when I have like... Uh, a decent amount of Chrome tabs open, and then I open an Android app of some sort. If I start jumping into the Android apps on here, that's when things st uh, start to kind of fall apart a little bit for me. But I don't really do that in Chrome yeah. OS. I appreciate that Chrome OS does that and, and enables you to run Android apps. I just don't ever feel like it's the perfect experience even when you on do the, that. Even on even the Pixelbook, when I have a lot of RAM, more processor power, I only use Android apps to fill gaps, mm -hmm. like Snapseed. So a few things that Chrome doesn't do well. I try to stay away from Android apps. They just really don't do well on Chrome OS. They're running an emulation. It's not a real, you know, Android platform. Yeah, and I mean, you know, it's nice to know that they do that, like... That, that you can if you need it. to. Yeah. Like this, for instance, this is the Twitter app running in an Android app on the tablet. That's the other problem. And I'm sorry. Nobody designs their apps for the form factor, right? Yeah, it's just a little too large. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so, you know, because it's meant to be run like a phone, like that. That's, that looks, how, that's how, yeah, but when you, at least you can expand it. Yes, I've also exactly. run into a lot of apps, Android apps, that look just like that on the screen. Yeah, so you can you can do a little bit of that with this here, and and great. I guess it's nice that you can, but I feel like it's never ideal. Uh, right. But there are ways to fill the gaps. If it's something that you don't have a Chrome app for, great. You can get the Android app and do it. I would just use the Twitter site. Of now, course. this is a really nice looking screen. The display is awesome. Uh, I would say it's one of the key features here. It's super sharp display. Uh, Twelve point three inches, three thousand by two thousand. Uh, that's so, really high. That's yeah. the that's the resolution of my uh, Surface Studio. Mm -hmm. which is a 30-inch display. I mean, that is what almost 300 uh, pixels per inch. That's really good. And of course, it's you know it's touch, touch. enabled. Okay. This is running the the latest Chrome OS 7.1, so it's got kind of more of a uh, more of a touch interface to it. Is it? Uh, do you ever see any hesitation? In the touch, is it always pretty responsive? Sometimes n navigating through like apps and, and pulling up the Doesn't tray, you see a, a little judder. You yeah. know, things will kind of kind of snap into place a little bit. But overall, I mean, I would say it's perfectly usable, perfectly doable as far as that's concerned. You know, they made these changes with Chrome OS, and I'm happy that they did. It brings it closer to something that can kind of operate on its own. If I pop this out of the keyboard, this stand, is I'm for interested. Instance, I mean, this is a, this is a tablet. First so, yeah. and foremost. There we go. So we're in tablet mode. In fact, if you want this keyboard, you have to pay extra. It's that's not, that's right. This yeah. is seven ninety nine for the tablet itself. The keyboard, which I'll talk about in a second, is an additional two hundred dollars. <laughs> so, so now we are at a thousand. Now you are at a thousand dollars. But as you can see here, this is Chrome OS running in tablet mode, and uh, you know I, I think my thinking around this has really shifted a little bit. You should definitely check out this week's. Twig, This Week in Google, Kevin Toffel was on, and we talked a little bit about the Pixel Slate, and he, he helped to kind of change my mind around it. I really wanted to bag on this because multitasking and being productive in tablet mode wasn't ideal for no. me, yeah. and he, he just basically had the reminder of, hey, you're using it wrong. Like, this is better for, like, the, the lean back experience. This is for when you have a movie and you want to sit down, you want to watch the movie, or you want to play a game or whatever. Being productive in tablet mode... Not ideal, and I would say that with I would hope that someday it, it would be okay to do that, but you know, multi-screen putting uh, things on both sides and then hopping between them, that's when I would feel things. you can do that. Though you, you can, can do it, but yeah. you can do it, but um, things would just fall apart. Like I'd, I'd tap into a cell and it wouldn't register. It would still tap on this side, so then I'd have to tap into the cell again, yeah. and just things would be missed along the way. I would, I would hope that they would fix that over time. So there's two different di directions this competes with. Uh, on the high end, 
with a Surface tablet and the ilk mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. Microsoft. They're running Windows 10, a real uh, desktop operating system. Right. And on the low end, the iPad and the iPad Pro. I'm a real fan of the iPad Pro. Um, have you? I don't even know if you use an iPad. I or, haven't used an iPad Pro, but I will. Say, I'm happy you mentioned that because we're nearing the beginning of the year where Megan and I usually do our switch. Well, the swap is coming, and this time we're going to do that. We're yeah. going to do the iPad Pro. She'll have the 12.9 inch. Yep, she'll have this slate, and so we'll switch and, mm -hmm. and kind of see what we come up with. As far as the hardware, it's got USB-C ports on both sides, that's so nice. that's really nice. That they, side, and they and can be charging. Side. Or unlike there. the iPad, you can use them for storage, right? Um, External yes, storage. absolutely. Yeah. You can, you can, you know, it makes it way more flexible, and I love having the charge on either side, depending on what you have to be like doing. I do like that. Yeah. You've got the dual uh, front-facing stereo speakers. That's why the bezels are, are really big because they had to put room for the speakers on the sides. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the bezels are, are reasonably big. big. They're yeah. nice and rounded, though. I forgive the bezels. <laughs> I forgive them on a tablet because you need a little bit of, of overlap for, for holding onto the device, yeah. I feel yeah. like. Uh, but then, of course, you snap it right in. It switches right over to desktop mode. If so I this, is, this is a open. special pogo pin on the bottom, a smart connector. Yes. So that powers the keyboard. The keyboard doesn't have to be independently charged or even Bluetooth, right? Yeah, so yes, exactly. It snaps it right into gear. I didn't really encounter any issues where I snapped it in and didn't get what I wanted out of it. Actually, right before the show today, it you happened. You did. Yeah. yeah, it happened. That was the first time that it's happened. It's because I touched it. Yeah, you were close. I Your broke magnetic it. field. <laughs> so I'll snap it in, yeah. and then this snaps into the $200 keyboard attachment. You can see back here, there's a magnets. Flap. Magnets all up and down. Just so, like the iPad, yeah. So I can go like that. Oh. I can, I can oh. move this any way I want. So Ooh. if I want it, deeper or if I want it steeper. So you can have any angle at all. Any angle. <gasps> And that that's is really a nice, nice feature. I wish Apple's keyboard did that. That's nice. Really nice. Uh, it moves pretty pretty smoothly on the back. I would say the one complaint that I have about this, and I think it's just this kind of device or this kind of keyboard in, in particular, is that it extends so far out that even though this is a laptop, it's kind of hard to have it on your lap unless yeah. you have really long legs. Because six foot eight, it fits on my legs. It don't, won't fit on everybody's legs. Unlike, it is a folio, so it covers yep. the whole thing. But unlike Apple's, it has a trackpad. Now, some people say, well, great, you need a trackpad. But because the iPad doesn't use a trackpad, that does shorten the length of oh, this keyboard, okay. right? That, it still that has makes to sense. cover it up. But. Yeah, totally. You still want to be able to cover yeah. up. Uh, you know, the entirety yeah. of the device. That's a nice looking yeah. when it's all put together. It's got a nice uh, soft it touch. It is. I would say the magnet on the bottom isn't very strong. So, uh, so if it falls, open? it's, yeah. you know, it's not really sticking to the bottom. The other magnet's a little bit stronger, but I guess you've got the weight of the keyboard. How is the that keyboard? It's got the round keys. It's a little odd looking. Uh, I actually really like the keyboard a lot. And um, it's hard to see here, of course, because we've got all the studio lights. They're backlit keys. Oh, I like that. So Apple's you can work in, yeah. in, in darkness. And I, you know, honestly, I would say initially I wasn't a huge fan of this, but I've used it now for a week and a half, almost two weeks. I've really grown to like it. Like this is basically what I've been using for the past two weeks here at, at, at Twit. And really? I've gotten really, really comfortable with it. So the real question, you also have a Pixelbook. I do have a Pixelbook. Yes. Google still sells the Pixelbook. Yeah. That's a two-in-one. So I mean, the prices are pretty similar, you know, depending on the... So that's the question. That is, that is a big question. Um, I mean, I know for myself, I'm probably going to continue using really? this. Really? Yes, because I want to be at the forefront. I always want to be where Google is yeah. as far as the direction that they're going. I didn't find myself with this keyboard uh, and, and the, the layout of the device itself any less productive here than I was on a Pixelbook. I do, though, have less of a use for a tablet functionality. Right. Well, that, that's the main differentiator. And that is the big differentiator. Um, Although I like the fingerprint reader. I wish the Pixelbook had a fingerprint reader. Fingerprint reader, reader is really you, nice. That's a real problem with Chrome OS yeah. is if you don't have an Android device to unlock it, you've got to enter your Google password. Right. That's annoying. I, I will say about the, the fingerprint reader, it's really nice because when you know when you, when you walk up to it and you want it on, you I just like put that. your finger on there. And, so and much faster. It gets and you in. Um, the downside, though, is, and this is where things kind of fall apart for, on a software perspective, if you want to use the fingerprint sensor on Android apps, there is no real oh. crosstalk there. Uh. So it's really a fingerprint sensor for Chrome OS to get you inside get of your you device. In. You want to use it to authenticate for other things, you're going to run into problems. You'll I'm not saying that it's completely there. impossible, yeah. but I couldn't get it to work with a few things. Okay. So okay. Uh, there you go. Ultimately, I'm probably going to stick with this. I think you really have to ask yourself, though, 
are you a laptop user or are, are you going to want to kind of go into that tablet mode? Even with the Pixelbook as it stands right now, it can fold all the way back so you have a tablet form factor. You just have the keyboard on the under, underside and that might be good enough. But there is something to be said for popping this out and just having it and being able to like sit on on an airplane and watch yeah. watch something in your lap you know I always I mean? you know what I always leave the keyboard on cuz it's a stand and I don't right. want to hold the thing totally. the whole time so I don't know if I really see a benefit to that either <laughs> totally totally yeah. I think I'm going to keep my pixel book you go ahead and use your uh, slate okay. at at least it's out there I have to say you hit a telling note when you said the fingerprint reader isn't integrated into android that, in a way, the problem with the whole That's ecosystem exactly is Android is a subsystem that doesn't is not a full partner. It doesn't work quite as well. It's a little janky. It can crash, mm -hmm. and uh, that shows uh, that lack of integration. I think shows a lack of effort on Google's part. They need to work harder to make this a unified, seamless experience. It's not there yet. Yeah, I mean, I tried with a couple of apps with the fingerprint sensor and, and Android apps. I, I'm not entirely sure whether no, it's like right. completely broken or yeah. just in the apps that I used. However, that did prompt me to go, okay, well, what about accessing the camera from Android apps? And I went in and tested those. You can those. do that. And you can do that. Yeah. So there are ways, maybe it's not fully thought out. Maybe, maybe this is one of those cases as Google is wont to do, where six months from now, a lot of these kinks are gonna be ironed out. Does this chat room is asking, have a fan? No, it's silent. I, ha I haven't heard a fan. No, I think it's silent. No, I haven't heard a fan yeah. kick in on yeah. this thing. It shouldn't with that processor, although yeah. maybe with an i5 it might it might want one. It might get pretty hot. Uh, I should mention before before we move on, I don't have it here with me, but there is another keyboard option that you can get. It's a third-party keyboard called the Bridge -Y. G type. G-R-Y-D-G-E, yeah. and it's 159 so it's less uh, less than the $200 uh, keyboard you see here, and it kind of takes it more into like the traditional... It's like a laptop. A laptop yeah. form factor. I have heard, though, that the keys and the trackpad are not as good as they are here. They're, they feel a little bit squishier, a so little try bit kind of like a toy. It. Yeah, try before you choose. Absolutely. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to continue using it. All right. Well, you know what we'll do in a few months? Maybe we'll get an update. Okay. And like, are you happy? Yeah, yeah. totally. Right. I'm happy. I'm happy to do that. And this I, is, this is my, my twit part, machine. I, I was really on the fence. I said, man, let Jason buy it. We'll, <laughs> we'll see. We'll see what he thinks. I think I'm going to stick with my Pixelbook. All right. I think that's the that's the way I, to go. I don't think you can go me. wrong doing that because yeah. the Pixelbook is fantastic. It is and last I love year's. My it is last year's hardware. Yeah. But I, don't, still, I mean, it's not as. F I don't know if it's not as what, but it's. It's the same operating system. But do you ever run in, into anything no. where you're like, oh, man, <laughs> no. this is so outdated. It's a I wish Chromebook. I had the new one. It's a Chromebook. Yeah. Uh, I bought the pen. I noticed you didn't buy the pen. No. Does it I, have a magnetic uh, thing? It does not. Okay. It, it does not have, like, a dock for it's the pen another problem. any sort of yeah. snap for it. It just kind of sits there. Yeah. yeah. It floats in space. Same pen, uh, though it looks like exactly the same pen as on the Pixelbook. So yes. I can, I'll lend you my Pixelbook pen. I never use that either. I never use yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> We're not artists. <laughs>